Welcome to Conversate, our podcast where we engage in conversation. And on this week's episode, I, Aaron and Kevin are talking about fasting, this biblical concept where people intentionally abstain from food. Um, but why would they do that? What does that have to do with our Christian walk? How, how could that help us grow in our faith? Well, uh, we're going to talk about that today, and uh, hopefully you can find something in it that maybe you can implement in order to continue to uh, grow in your relationship with God. As always, we hope you enjoy. Kevin, what are you doing? Uh, eating a donut and nice. drinking some coffee to boot. Well, should we should we officially begin or just uh, let you keep notching on those? Well, we always got a clink. Hey, Aaron, Kevin, <laughs> good to see you, man. <laughs> you got a big plate of donuts. Yeah, dude, a, a triple stack, I call it. Huh. That's a lot. A lot of donuts, Kevin. People are going to think that we staged this podcast to talk about fasting, and here you are feasting on donuts. We're talking about fasting today? Yeah. Ah, man. Put the donuts in the trash. Ah, I took a bite. <laughs> Broke the fast for the All day. All right. Well, maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow. All right. <laughs> well, you were, you, you were gone. You weren't, you weren't uh, fasting while away. You were, mm. you were celebrating a wedding, right? That's so, right. Yeah. You had a good time? I did. It was great. Yeah, so it was my sister. The last time that we were on this brown couch, you were just back from a wedding, too, and you could hardly talk. So at least you can talk right now. I know, I know. I, I'd like to say I took it easy, uh, but uh, I really didn't. Uh, my sister's weed wedding was not, you know, like two days ago. It was like nine days ago. Uh, so the same vocal uh, uh, distress was going on while I was in St. Louis. God. So I just got it out of the way so I could uh, get back and be on it, you know. It worked. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. So yeah, it's gonna be back, man. Yeah, it's gonna be back awesome. on the brown couch. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, let's. I, I think we should just get into it because I'm. I'm really curious. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, so we're. You know, again, we're doing the sermon series on spiritual disciplines, right. and you and I planned this together and picked out all the all the disciplines we were going to preach through, and fasting was one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I don't even remember. We talked quite a bit when we were going through all of them about our experiences with these different disciplines, but I don't honestly remember if we had much of a conversation about the fasting one. Sure. Did we? Mm, probably not, because I never heard the story that you shared yesterday yeah. uh, or this week in worship. Uh, I had never heard, and I feel like had we talked about it, I would have gotten uh, at least a flavor. That I would have told you about how I cheated at a fast. <laughs> by... Even the, the idea of, uh, you know, like, here's a youth event. We're going to have a 32-hour fast. Yeah. That's a very humorous to me. <laughs> like, it? Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad idea. And I think probably kid, you know, I mean, it would sound like it was fun, you know, and an experience. And in some way, even put, you know, that there's a reality of this spiritual discipline called fasting, yeah. you know, out there. But also sounds like maybe in a way that was maybe not all that conducive for actually actually fasting for why a person would fast yeah. in the biblical sense, yeah. right? But it's, yeah. a, it's a lost art for us, right? Like, right. as Americans. I think so. And maybe even as, well, I don't know, maybe would you say as modern people or just as, as modern Americans? I think modern Americans, because okay. in the research I was doing, mm-hmm. there are a lot of Christians throughout the world to this day where fasting is a part of their regular mm. um, spiritual discipline just uh, as a means of being a disciple of, of Jesus, how they how they grow in their faith and mm-hmm. um, walk that way. Uh, I think I think a lot of people are I know that I know there are some some church traditions that are skeptical of the whole idea of fasting because I think mm-hmm. like uh, lots of things in Christian history, I think fasting has been abused and mistaught and mis yep. mis uh, applied. Uh, in different churches through different times and so mm-hmm. some people then naturally get skeptical of it in general you know and so I shared some of those in my sermon but just I think it's maybe there's more to it but I think kind of the two big ones are like in the Catholic Church um, fasting was always this like thing you had to do mm-hmm. right and it was a um, sometimes even given as a form of penance for sins that you committed that you had to um, you know you had to do it I actually just heard today from a a person who grew up in the Catholic Church that that she remembered um, having having to fast for an hour before receiving the Lord's Supper. So uh, sure. I actually didn't uh-huh. know that. So mm-hmm. maybe you know if you're a Catholic person or you know somebody, maybe that's 
still being practiced today, but she remembers like growing up, mm-hmm. her parents would call to her and be like, come and get your breakfast real quick, you know, because you got to get it <laughs> in. hour yeah. is coming. Well, you know, and there was another uh, uh, woman who came out of church uh, yesterday and was telling me that she had grown up Catholic. Okay. And because, uh, you know, this idea of fasting was kind of new or whatever, but she was saying, oh, no, when I was growing up, yes, it was even Saturday night is oh. when they, for her, you know, in whatever parish she belonged to, Saturday night after the, after dinner, that began the fast all okay. the way to communion. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, I mean, Martin Luther, you know, I, I quoted that in the small catechism. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, it, it certainly is good bodily preparation. You know, it makes sense. Um, I don't, you know, again, I think we've said it about all these disciplines. Like, there, we don't, from our standpoint, we don't see them as any sort of work that is meritorious of mm-hmm. getting God's favor or salvation or anything, but right. they're just these practices that we can implement, again, to kind of deepen our relationship with God. Like, yeah. um, and but, uh, the, the research I was seeing too is that basically throughout the New Testament, in the New Testament, the whole idea of fasting is very much, it seems like a voluntary act that mm-hmm. people do just at, at certain times. Like it's not, uh, we don't we don't see any like New Testament precedent except for like the Pharisees, but any New Testament precedents of like you got you need to fast on this day, you need to fast mm. this many times a week, you need to fast this long. It's just like sure there are these certain times or events that come about where it's like fasting would be an appropriate thing to incorporate um, right now. Well, and this you know I mean so I do know uh, there's a first century work it's called the Didache, yeah. right? It's kind of this like manual that arose out of the early church that gives. Uh, I mean, it paints a little bit of a picture. It's not a huge piece of work, honestly. It's pretty small, um, but it talks. It'll talk about different practices, like in worship. Um, it would talk. It talks about all sorts of things. If you're interested in like what the early church looked like, it's kind of a neat resource because it's like, oh wow, okay, you were dealing with that. That's kind of interesting. Or oh hey, you're you were dealing with something we still talk about today. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Right. Uh, but there is a line in the Didache that talks about um, feast or sorry, not feast days, but uh, fasting days. And so apparently there were two days of the week that the Pharisees fasted on. Was it Tuesday and Thursday? Sounds right. Okay, I think that's (laughs) what I heard. Yeah, if that's what you had read. Because then in the Didache, it it tells, it advises the new Christians to actually move their fast days uh, to like Mondays and Wednesdays or Wednesdays and Fridays, something like that. Basically alternative days so as not to be confused with. Basically, I think the thing we're getting at, which is this isn't something that you're doing that makes you, you know, right in the eyes of God, right? Because I think that was always the stumbling block of the Pharisees, right? right? They had all these, all these rules and rules on rules, you know. I mean, it wasn't just God's law; they made laws well far above and beyond God's right. laws, um, and that were all seen as kind of the way to be a good follower of God, yeah. right? And and therefore earn yeah God's favor, and which is why they're always you know they pop up in these episodes in the in the Gospels where they're judging people usually, right? Yeah. So anyways, um, yeah. So it's, it's it seems like based off the Didache uh, that fasting remained um, at least for some uh, uh, early church communities a real regular part of kind of the the following of Jesus or of that yeah worship life. Hmm. Um, which is, you know, yeah, so I think, like, you know, we, even talking about, like, the idea of fasting making sense, like, I don't know, I think, I don't know if it does. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like the challenge for us, you know, like, coming from our lack of, it's a practice, I think, for, I know you and I have shared this, probably many in our congregation have, uh, would, would feel this way. Fasting is just this foreign thing. Yeah. You know, like, we don't really. We don't. Do it. We don't. And I, and I, I wonder, you know, I wonder what that is, you know, I, I like so my it. sermon, like maybe it's because we love food, you know. Mm, sure. <laughs> we, you know, we have a culture of abundance. Um, mm-hmm. I think that I mean. So sometimes we sometimes we talk about like, I think, obviously we like we love this country that we live in. We love the freedoms that we have to worship God and all this stuff. But mm-hmm. we have we have a we have the ability to very easily be comfortable Christians. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and live comfortable lives, frankly. Mm-hmm. Like, even though gas is, you know, over $5 a gallon, it's like, well, I can still get around. Like, Yeah, if that's the biggest discomfort yeah, in your life, yeah, that's, you're I, living a pretty comfortable life. In comparison to the rest of the world? Yeah. Even right. to this day? Exactly. Absolutely. So, yeah. um, 
So I think we're just, <clears throat> we, I, so I, I wonder if fasting could play maybe even a more integral role for us who, who live comfortable lives who aren't, we're not really ever like mm. not that comfortable. Like mm -hmm. right now we're recording this mm -hmm. and it's lunchtime and my body knows that it's lunchtime and it's mm -hmm. sort of like, you're gonna eat lunch soon, you know? Yeah. Like I, I can feel, I can feel it in my body, you know, like mm -hmm. just that, that, um, that reality. And so, um, so to, to kind of intentionally put ourselves in a kind of a place of discomfort, um, I, I, I mean, it deepens that mm. that dependence on God. I think we know this. We we know that it is through some of the most difficult times of life, through some of the most perilous moments and things that the mm. hard things that we have to deal with in life mm -hmm. where we actually grow the most mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know and so but we have such an easy access to avoid the hard things sure in our lives you know so i think fasting is kind of that that place where we can intentionally create some of it you know yeah where we can intentionally create this like this hunger you know this mm -hmm. hunger in our bodies, but this hunger for God, you know? Yeah, kind of like, uh, you know, I hear it as like a reorienting or maybe orienting ourselves towards truth, right? And what is truth? What is, what's my reality? Oh, my reality is actually total dependence upon this God who does look out for me and provides and, and gives and bestows, you know, uh, so much blessing from above. But we do have, because of our, um, I guess because of our plenty, maybe in our country, it's really easy to think that, ah, oh, no, I mean, everything I have is stuff that I've acquired, I've earned. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, stuff that, that I have worked hard and therefore I have, and that's why I have it, mm -hmm. which really goes against, you know, I mean, what we know scripturally to be true, which is, well, even if, even the stuff I have, even, even if I have, you know, worked and been paid and used my, you know, funds that I've received for payment to buy whatever thing, like, the gifts that I have inherently, yeah. you know, that I've been, you know, my skills and gifts, you cultivate them, but how are they there to begin with? Yeah. Right? Like it all goes back to God. And I think you alluded to that a few times in the sermon, like that, and I, I really appreciated that because I think it's so true. Like it's this fasting gives you a very tangible and probably a pretty, it's going to be a pretty loud way if you haven't fasted, you yeah. know, you're going to feel your stomach yeah. growl and you're going to hear it call out to you. Yeah. And and what is that telling you? It's telling you you're a person in need. Yeah. You have needs. Yeah. But then that act of fasting is saying my who fulfills my need or what fulfills my need? Yeah. It's not actually, you know, I mean, and food is obviously something we need to live <laughs> off of. Like yeah. you do actually need bread. Yeah. You know, man cannot, you know, live by bread alone, but you you do need bread, yeah, still, yeah, right? Exactly. But the, the kind of subtle danger there, right, is forgetting that greater need. I mean, so I mean, like, food is one of the most basic necessities we do have. Yeah. But it's still not the most essential thing. Yeah. So that's that constant <coughs> reminder, right, in, the, in this spiritual discipline is that reality of, oh, my gosh. Like, yeah. I need this food, but I actually need you even more yeah. than I need this food. Well, I, even, I, I was um, listening to another pastor um, preach about fasting and he was saying too like uh, he said you know if I asked you Kevin hey what are you going to be doing uh, 20 years from today like hmm. you know on this day 20 years from now what are you gonna, what do you think you're going to be doing I don't know it's 20 years away and he's like you know what you are what I know for a fact you're going to do you're going to eat <laughs> you know sure, it's yeah. just like it's like a it's a given oh yeah, yeah that's <laughs> true I probably will eat you know, some food 20 years from now. Yeah. So it's just that, that reminder of, oh, wow, yeah, food is a huge part of what I do mm -hmm. on, a, on a daily basis, you know. And so many of us don't even, we don't even think about the things that we're throwing in our mouths. We just throw it in our mouths because our body's like, oh, I need something, we just grab it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But uh, to, to really, I don't know, be intentionally nourished by, by what God has to provide, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so in my sermon, I, I shared kind of the the biblical finding, kind of the biblical groupings of what we see scripturally for um, different times of fasting, different ways that people throughout the Bible fasted. Uh, and I don't, I'm just curious if any of those resonated with you, or that you might think about mm -hmm. in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so it was like um, you know, fasting as a response to God's activity in your life. So, if 
if you're sensing that God's working something in you or you're really kind of maybe seeking discernment uh, from God on a decision you got to make, some sort mm -hmm. of choice, some sort of thing, you know, you really want God to, to be aware to, to incorporate fasting with that. The other is turning from sinful choices. So, you know, if, you're, if you've lived this life going after these things and you want to leave that behind, mm -hmm. to leave it behind, but then to also fast and to really come to God empty and have him fill you in a different way. And the third one is when a just tragedy strikes, mm -hmm. just to, to fast, you know, and to come to God. So I don't know, did any of, does any of that resonate with you or were you thinking, oh wow, I could incorporate fasting in that aspect of my life, you know? Yeah, yeah, the one that really stood out to me uh, was the third one, was oh, when right. tragedy strikes. Okay. Um, it stood out to me because, in, and I, I can't remember if you uh, talked about this or kind of alluded to it, but um, yeah, you did, right. When, when tragedy strikes, there is a tendency for us, just as like a basic human response, yeah. to kind of lose track of some of those basic, essential things you would normally do, you know, whether it's like hyg hygienically taking care of yourself yeah. or but even eating. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> see, uh, this is one, one of my curiosities about fasting. And again, I'm coming from a place, just so <laughs> listeners know, I'm, I'm about on the, the level of, of Aaron in terms of experiences with fasting, yeah. more being accidental than intentional uh, in my life. Um, actually, at the National Youth Gathering. Um, anyways, that's another story for another time. But um, sometimes in life, things happen, and we have just a, re a really hard time reckoning with it. Something's gone on, and it's like it's like it's maybe it's too heavy, too weighty, to really want to look it in the eyes. Mm. And we have lots of ways that we kind of. I think subconsciously guard ourselves, right? So, you know, for somebody, bad thing strikes and, and what do they do? Well, maybe they, well, maybe they have a drink, mm -hmm. you know, or a few drinks because it's like, uh, look, I don't want to, I don't want to think about this. I don't want to deal with this. Um, you know, maybe, maybe something happens and we uh, kind of numb out or tune out to, uh, I think technology today mm -hmm. is a huge uh, uh, way that we avoid dealing with maybe harder realities maybe even like small hard realities like it might be man ah oh, my spouse is really getting on my nerve really getting <laughs> under my skin but instead of going and talking to her and and dealing with whatever's gone on eh, i feel better by watching this television show or scrolling through this social media app or by eating yeah See, oh, this is the thing. For sure. Like food can even be a way that we console ourselves when life is hard. Oh, we, and we do. Uh huh. We and do. and this and actually, there's a pretty interesting story. Uh, well, it, it goes back to David and Bathsheba. So we're talking about David fasting, but uh, David uh, fasts when uh, God. Uh, he is told by God because of his sin with Bathsheba that their firstborn son is actually going to die. Oh, yeah. If you remember that, yeah. right? And David's servants, are they're all freaked out. They're worried about him. Uh, but David is, he's, he, what is he doing? I mean, I guess he's, he's kind of doing number two maybe. Like he yeah. has sinned. He knows he sinned. He's fasting now out of the seriousness of his sin. Yeah. And, uh, and kind of out of a devotion really to God. Like yeah. he wants, he really wants to embody the repentance, yeah. and so he's fasting, and uh, and and his servants are all worried. They're like, David, you really should eat something. He's like, No, like I'm not gonna eat. Uh, yeah. You know, this my my this child is gonna in peril, right? And actually, it turns out that the, the child does, does. die. Mm -hmm. Like God's word is fulfilled, the punishment is given, and see, in this, and it, that almost goes to show that, like, it, at least in some way, I mean, it's a heavy episode, and there's more to it than this, but that the child dying didn't have to do with David not earning God's favor by fasting, right? Mm -hmm. You could read that and think, oh man, he should have done more. Yeah. And, you know, he didn't do it good enough or yeah. something. That's not the point. But the point was, there was something heavy, traumatic um, going on in David's life and fasting was the only thing he could think to do. He mm -hmm. couldn't he couldn't stomach the idea of eating, right? Because mm -hmm. of his, uh, uh, this kind of curse that was coming uh, for his child. And then actually, as soon as the child dies, he eats. Hmm, eats right. right and the guys are like shouldn't you be fasting now or like now you eat yeah. and but the, the point there is David he <clears throat> he knew who his God was hmm. and he knew that the curse that he had experienced and received God was judging according to God's standards and David was okay with that hmm. and he knew okay this judgment's done like I'm not I'm not gonna change God's mind 
by doing my own actions. And you said that. You're, we're not bending God to our will. Right. Right? Um, but so, so yeah, you know, my, my child has died, but I, I can eat now. Like, mm. this is a done thing. And basically, I guess it's, you know, David almost sh- showing and signifying, I'm on the same page as God here, you mm. know. But that's what fast. I mean, fasting is somewhat, I think, to get us on, on, on God's page. And sometimes to get us on our... I think to go full circle with yeah. my long monologue here, no, it's, good. it's just to get ourselves on the same page as our own souls. Mm. Sometimes our souls are, they're screaming out to us. Mm. They like, they know something is up and we got all these like different ways we try and sort it out. But I think fasting is a way to lean into what's this thing that's happened and, and how, how might fasting not only just um, help me mourn, but also bring me back to that reminder and remembrance of who gives me everything I need, mm-hmm. right? I'm dealing with this grief over here, and instead of ignoring the grief or pretending it doesn't exist, no, I'm gonna actually let my body even grieve. Mm-hmm. Like, my body's gonna embody what I'm feeling, and then I'm gonna let God fill me, because mm-hmm. he's the only one who can. Yeah. He's the only one who actually can fill me. Yeah. That's so powerful. I, yeah. I really appreciate the way that you just described all that, and for uh, reminded me of that episode with with David, um, and I I forgot about that, but I I do remember. And so, yeah, um, yeah. we <laughs> I I like what you said. Just it's it's sad, but it's so true about how how distracted we we get and how quickly we we turn to things that are not God. Mm just to ignore the hard stuff. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so again, fasting is this, it's something, you know, we can do it when the hard stuff comes up, mm-hmm. for sure. Um, or y- y- you can intentionally incorporate fasting as a regular discipline, in or if, if you're living a really comfortable life, mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. order to kind of make it a little bit uncomfortable, in order to make you more deeply appreciate you know, yeah. uh, who God is and, and the provisions that he, he gives you. Draw you in the experience of God. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And, I, and I think that's probably, you know, I, not that I know or yeah. we know because yeah, we haven't really practiced it ourselves, but I would think that you would almost almost be, have a better time if you, if you go into it with a more intentional approach prior to something big happening, right? I mean, when something big happens, if you've had never practiced fasting, you're probably not going to all of a sudden think, I should fast, yeah. you know, or this might help. Or, it, and so much of it is about um, understanding why we're even doing it, right? Because right. again, the whole thing is like we're not doing it to earn God's favor. We're not doing it to be better Christians or something. But like, it will draw us into th- th- that truth, that reality, right. that God is our He is our sole provider. Well, and, it's I mean, it's just it's just interesting. So all of these disciplines are just like any other discipline too. So we can we can talk about fasting maybe in short increments on a regular basis in preparation for times where we may do it on a longer basis, right? So, uh-huh. you know, I like going for runs, right? But I can't just like, I can't just get up off the couch and go run a marathon, you know, a marathon or whatever. You <laughs> yeah. gotta do it in little increments. And sometimes those little increments along the way are painful, mm. but then they get a little bit less painful, you know, mm. uh, incre- incrementally, mm-hmm. even though um, you, you have, doing some of those hard things even like with exercise you know i mean it's a very kind of uh, it, it makes sense like exercise is not it's not always easy it's not mm-hmm. it, it's not necessarily fun to get up off the couch and go exercise you know but mm-hmm. when you when you do that and you you kind of accomplish a hard thing uh, it it just it, forms it reorients you, you know like this and and i i i I think even exercise can be a spiritual discipline, you know, sure. when you see it from a Christian standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Lots I of- mean, they all kind of like, they all kind of flow into that, that uh, dynamic that we see of suffering yeah. producing good things. I know. Right? Which is like amazing that I, it's weird. I just, I, but <laughs> I think that's the, that's the, as a, I don't mean, I don't know if it's an American thing. I think people, probably people in general want to avoid the hard things, but yeah, in, probably, in our, well, in, probably mo- uh, well, yeah, you're right. In our American all. context, though, I yeah. think we just don't we don't like we don't like the to deal with the hard stuff. And well, you know, we'll even blow it up to say all Western societies. We'll throw <laughs> Europe in there too. Yeah, sure. So we can feel better about ourselves. No. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I guess you know, going going forward, I I'm I'm not I'm, I'm still not. 
Uh, I'm still not totally sure how I'm going to implement this one. Mm -hmm. I think for or me, even if I mean yeah, honestly, I think yeah. it's fair to say, right? Like yeah. all the all the other all the uh, out of all the disciplines that that we're going to be talking about over these six weeks. Yeah. Um, I don't mean this in any sort of like uh, boasting way, but I feel like I'm. I'm already implementing them in my life and doing them. This is the, but this is the this one is, this is where the... it's like, huh. So I think, I think I'm going to be thinking about it yeah. more. Um, not that I'm not thinking about the, the other ones and, and how to continue to develop them, but, um, but this is certainly one that is going to sit with me. Um, and, and I don't know. We'll yeah. see. We'll see what comes of it. And I, I think, guess that's kind of where I'm at. And I think that's a great spot, you know, to kind of cap with as we, as we think about moving ahead for, anybody listening right like when it comes to any any of these spiritual disciplines right we're all on a we're all at different places in our spiritual kind of walk or our faith journey right and um you know that's okay yeah. <laughs> it's, it's okay because yeah. we're also all forgiven and we're all loved uh in god i mean god's his god i mean he's he's transcendent he is he, he's everything right and so it's like he he's doing just fine without <laughs> us doing any of these things but he's offering himself right to us yeah. how much how much can we grow uh in him which will ultimately lead to you know these things that we we talk about a lot peace hope love these things that jesus is mm -hmm. right the more that we uh draw near to him the more we're going to be able to kind of get in touch with some of those things and so but but um but i like your thoughtfulness aaron of, of saying i don't have to feel hurriedly like pushed into this thing that I got to do now is like, no, just let it sit with you. Take some, think about it. If it doesn't seem like it's the kind of thing that, that you can, you know, I mean, don't, don't be like, well, I don't think I can do it. So therefore I'm not going to do it. But like, don't feel, don't feel overly pressured. Take some time. Think about it. Be intentional. I guess is what we're saying. Yeah. These things are all intentional steps. Right. Don't feel like pushed into it and don't feel like you have to take on all the ones we're covering in all these weeks at yeah. the same time. I would actually advise against that. <laughs> right. Just start with one. Focus on one and then um, stick with it. Yeah. Be disciplined in that sense yeah. because all of these things, just like working out, yeah. just like any other discipline you do, they're going to take time. Oh my. Yeah. But give them some time. And man, you do. I mean, I remember we haven't, well, we're riding bikes now, but back when we were working out at the gym, like, you know, I, I don't like working out. But once you hit like week six or something, you're like, man, I feel kind of good. <laughs> <laughs> Where's, where you feel, where you, when you, you miss it, fruit. and when you miss it, you're like, oh, I feel different that I didn't have that as part, in part as part of my life you know right and, and your your body's like are you gonna work out you know that's a, <laughs> yeah, that's a good place I, to get to you know yeah yep and yeah and, and and i think that with all of these you get that little bit more of a reflective introspect I'm, I'm being aware of what's going on in me and the more i'm aware of that the more i can uh let god intersect uh, and interact with what's going on in me so that what comes out of me is actually, you know, very much, uh, uh, I don't know, filtered by Christ. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so. Awesome. Yeah, man. Well, that was a good chat. It was. I'm you're hungry. Gonna, <laughs> are you going to finish the, your donuts? Heck yeah. Worked <laughs> up an appetite. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>